directors, they're all thrilled to see Elvis back, on, uh, back at the studio. Si Elvis compte sur la Paramount pour lui offrir un film dramatique sans chanson, il sera déçu. Hal Wallace confie à Norman Tarog et Michael Moore la réalisation d'une comédie musicale légère sur les aventures d'un soldat américain en poste en Allemagne de l'Ouest. Probably if they hadn't been in the service, they wouldn't have done GI Blues with Elvis. It was a, be able to come back from the service and now be a part of, of GI Blues, I think was uh, the whole idea. Look, boy, the roof's caved in. Captain Hobart's on his way over here. He'll want to talk to you. What about? You're asking me what I mean, what it's a different voice. kind of musical than the films he made previously. Uh, in King Creole, when he sings, he's a nightclub entertainer. There's a reason he's singing those songs. In Loving You, same thing. He's an entertainer. Now he's going to start making the kind of movie where you burst into song uh, for really no apparent reason. You know, and you're wondering, where are the backup? Where's the backup musicians? It's kind of signifying something to come, because pretty soon there'll be a formula for these type movies that he's going to make. It's Elvis on a love campaign no guy or gal should miss. Liebe. For those who do not understand, Liebe translated means love. Oh, you don't have to explain that to a GI. That's one of the first words he learns when he gets over here. Oh, you too, Tosa. L'album de la bande sonore de GI Blues arrive dans les magasins en octobre 1960 et se classe aussitôt premier au palmarès, établissant un record époustouflant de 111 semaines au hit parade. Ce sera l'album le plus populaire de la carrière d'Elvis. Elvis is back. He was fabulous. He was, uh, as you, when I was doing that particular movie with him, he was a complete teetotaler. Mm -hmm. Didn't smoke, didn't drink, didn't do anything, except have girlfriends, lots of girlfriends. And uh, well, he had a wonderful sense of humor. And uh, I remember, though, thinking at that time, it must be very hard to be him, because he couldn't go anywhere. I mm -hmm. mean, he really couldn't. He had a suite up at the Beverly Wilshire Hotel, and he couldn't leave. Le film sort le mois suivant et obtient un énorme succès. Les recettes du film sont parmi les plus élevées de l'année. Si Elvis doutait de sa popularité après son passage dans l'armée, le succès de la bande sonore de G.I. Blues et du film lui-même dissipe immédiatement ses doutes. Les inquiétudes d'Elvis quant à la qualité de ce film restent cependant intactes. Après les critiques encourageantes pour King Creole deux ans auparavant, Elvis comptait sur des rôles dramatiques plus stimulants. Movies that uh, uh, probably were offered to Marlon Brando, but Brando turned them down for whatever reason, could have been offered to Elvis, but I don't think Hollywood even bothered offering him those movies because they knew he wasn't going to do it. He was going to do light musical, musical comedies in a way. And that's what he was going to do, and that's what he did, and that's, uh, that's a tragedy. En fait, le rôle d'Elvis dans Flaming Star, son film suivant, a d'abord été offert à Marlon Brando, qui l'a refusé. And this house and all in it will die. Barbara Eden. Ce western sombre met également en vedette Barbara Eden, qui deviendra ensuite la vedette de I Dream of Genie. He played an Indian in that film, and he was very concerned, very concerned about what he was doing and whether he did it well, because he was uh, conscious of the fact that he, he wasn't schooled in this particular facet of his profession, and he wanted to learn, and he was trying to learn. I thought he was great. This was a little different. It was a little more serious. He took this a little, little more serious part, and he thought there wasn't going to be as many songs in it. He didn't think there was any songs in it, really, at first, but then they, they added some songs to it. Ne pensant qu'au profit que générera la vente de la bande sonore, les producteurs s'empressent de remplir le film de chansons. On s'attend même d'Elvis qu'il chante à cheval. Elvis actually had one of his rare temper tantrums on that set because he didn't want to sing a song on horseback. And Don Siegel actually wound up getting some of those numbers out of the film. There's only a couple now. Every man has a flaming star. Malheureusement pour Elvis, Flaming Star est un échec. Le film suivant d'Elvis, Wild in the Country, est un autre drame. Il y joue le rôle d'un jeune écrivain tourmenté par ses problèmes personnels. Elvis thought it was more of a serious role for him, uh, and, uh, you know, he, he, he got into it. I mean, he really felt, he really tried, and, but, you know, he still, again, he was not too thrilled with throwing a couple songs in there. There was only, I think, three or four songs in that whole movie. 
but he wished there wouldn't have been any songs in it. My knees are weak, my head is spinning around. I guess that love has turned me upside down. Thought I'd get hurt, but gee, it's turning out swell. I slipped, I stumbled, I fell. Wild in the Country sera le dernier véritable film dramatique d'Elvis Presley pour près de 10 ans. Le message est clair. Si les producteurs veulent faire des profits, il faut beaucoup de chansons. 1961 sera une année clé dans la carrière cinématographique d'Elvis Presley. Il vient de signer un nouveau contrat de 5 ans avec le producteur Hal Wallace. Le premier film de cette nouvelle entente, Blue Hawaii, est en partie tourné sur place dans ce 50e et nouvel état de l'Union américaine. One of the best movies Elvis made and enjoyed making was definitely Blue Hawaii because uh, the locations we were at, we were on Kauai and there's a hotel called Coco Palms, which is no longer there. Uh, every night after we were shooting, there was a place we'd go sit outside after dinner. Everybody ate together at night in those days. Every night we sat there and we'd ate with all the people, the crew, well, most of it was crew people. And uh, after that, he'd go sit in a bar and uh, Patty Page, uh, the singer, was there because her husband, Charlie Kern, was the choreographer in the movie. After dinner, he would go to his room, get his guitar, and uh, some of his guys would get their instruments and come back down. And we would just sit around in the lounge there and sing. And um, that was fun. Elvis with her would sit, play guitar, and sing songs all evening of the night. It was just something that was just unbelievable. It was like a movie scene, but it wasn't. It was just us having a good time. He felt great in it. And those are memories that I, I can remember that were just unbelievable, and uh, he was so happy. And uh, that was one of the happiest movies he ever made. Patty Page has another souvenir that he attached to Blue Hawaii. Elvis's cousin Lamar and I, who rode in this little canoe down the lagoon, going into the wedding when they got married in Blue Hawaii. And they didn't have enough extras to um, do this. And so Lamar and I offered to do it. And I remember we didn't get paid either, so we weren't members of the extras union, so hope nobody catches me for it after all these years. But um, Lamar and I took a dollar bill and we each took half of it. And he signed mine and I signed his. And I still have it. Hawaii is, the, it, it's a new state. It's our new 50th state. There's a great deal of excitement you know, over, over welcoming Hawaii to, to the U.S. What could be more commercial than uh, sending Elvis Presley to Hawaii, putting him up against the lush tropical scenery, uh, giving him an incredible bevy of beauties, including Joan Blackman. You know, they're really not his equal in many ways, but they're pretty, they're eye candy. Uh, it's got 14 songs, which means there's a soundtrack you can sell. Uh, it's got one song that's absolutely terrific, Can't Help Falling in Love, probably one of the greatest ballads Elvis ever did, which is going to give it lots of airplay, which is important. You know, they're going to be able to sell records at the same time. And a plot that is sort of cute. The, the plot isn't offensive. It doesn't threaten you. It's got a, a number of gags. It's got a little romance in it, non-threatening romance. You know, and pretty much you have the Elvis Presley formula. Blue Hawaii becomes the cookie cutter for the films to come. Blue Hawaii sort en novembre 1961 et rapporte plus que tous les films précédents d'Elvis. The fastest selling album in the nation, it's Elvis. RCA Victor presents the original soundtrack. Tout comme l'album GI Blues, la bande sonore de Blue Hawaii est lancée un mois avant la sortie du film. Il atteint la première position du palmarès et il reste une durée impressionnante de 20 semaines. Hélas, les ventes records d'albums, les prodigieuses recettes de films et la popularité toujours croissante d'Elvis anéantissent progressivement l'espoir qu'il entretenait de devenir un acteur sérieux. I told Parker, I said, I don't know why you didn't let Elvis get some training. He could have had a major performer. I mean, he was a major personality, probably the greatest personality of certainly anybody that I ever saw, including the Beatles. He was one man the Beatles are for. I mean, you got a different dynamic going. But I said no one was 
more personable than he was. I mean, he could really touch the public, be they old, young, middle-aged, it didn't make any difference. I said, I witnessed that. And he said, well, Bill, I thought it was better to put him in those things that he knew best. I think the great, the great shame here is that Elvis could have made 50 incredible movies uh, that would have really highlighted what a good actor this guy was, um, working with the right people, working with the right directors. But it appeared like nobody really wanted him to do that. You know, they, they, they wanted him to dance on tables and, um, and have go-go girls behind him the whole time. I never really got that, never understood that. But you, you, you never miss the opportunity to see it. You know, King Creole was a great film. Um, Jailhouse Rock was a great film. Um, but I think as time went on, um, uh, he, wasn't, he wasn't really, maybe he wasn't into it so much, I don't know. I don't know. But, but it came across like he wasn't really into it.